Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Gimpy, and as you can see, I am here with Sherman Leader. I have been excited to get this to the uh, table for you guys uh, to show it to you, let you see how the gameplay actually works. Uh, I played through it for the past couple of days when I haven't been on my computer uh, working over graphics uh, for this game. Uh, you guys will not believe the amount of hours I have put in front of the screen getting uh, good graphics for you guys so I can make it very clear and, and legible for you guys. Uh, I do appreciate Kevin over at DVG helping me out with that. Uh, big props to you for, uh, for that. It's going to look a lot better in the video. But anyway, I'm going to take and walk you guys through the setup and how I get to uh, this point. Depending on how long that takes, it uh, may be part two before I get into the actual rolling dice and uh, attacking. We'll just see, but I want to make sure I go through slow enough that anyone has any concerns or questions uh, should be able to get those answered. Real quick before I carry on, uh, first thing, I received multiple requests from people asking for a place to donate to the channel. I do appreciate that. I've gone ahead and set up a PayPal link down in the description below. Uh, don't feel obligated, but if you want to, by all means, it'll help me out with lighting and cameras and SD cards and stuff like that. So if you want to, by all means, I appreciate it. Uh, second thing I've made sure to mention in all my videos that uh, I am going to be doing a Gippies game giveaway. Um, the game, I just got confirmation, is in the mail. It hasn't arrived to me yet because you know, mail service is shit during December. So when it gets here, I'll show it to you and what the game is. But I'll go ahead and let you know that to be entered to a chance to win, uh, just like my previous giveaways, all you have to do is subscribe and comment. Uh, you can comment in this video. You can comment in uh, the follow on part two of this video. I'll mention whatever videos count towards the uh, giveaway at the beginning of the video so you guys will know. Uh, but this one will definitely count. Part two of this video will count and uh, possibly some others just depending on what I've got going on. I've got some more tutorials going up for Lock and Load Tactical, which I probably won't uh, worry about that because I don't want a bunch of comments on those that aren't like question related. I want those to be uh, specifically to help people learn the game system. Anyway, uh, enough about that. That covers the uh, quick little admin stuff I had to do. Let's take and get started. And the neat part about this game, so let me bump this forward so you guys can see a little easier, is right here along the top is a sequence of play and it pretty much walks you through the whole thing. Once you've you know, glanced over the rule book, uh, which is not difficult, easy to understand, it you can take and go by this top line and understand the basic gist of what you're gonna need to do for the entirety of the game. All right, so one of the first things that you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, select a campaign card. Now look in the top left of the screen, I'll take and put up an example of a campaign uh, card for you, but you're gonna have a varied selection of campaign cards. I have one uh, down there. I selected the North Africa 1942 campaign to use. It's listed down as an intro, um, campaign so I thought this would be a good one to start with now it has the little picture on it it shows you're gonna be uh, attacking the Germans the little area of operations which is obviously North Africa now those numbers there above where it says North Africa 1942 determines the enemy tactical movement and I will get into that when we actually get down to the tactical board itself now you see where it says intro that just shows you the level of difficulty when it comes to it and then the plus 55 is your so points your uh strategic operations or special i forget what it is so points your your money all right so that's how much it's adding to whatever the op, uh, objective card you pick uh, goes with you'll see that here in a sec uh, there to the right, it says desert. That's going to tell you what type of terrain tiles you're going to use, which, oh my God, the terrain tiles. I went ahead and uh, broke out all the ones that I got, and this isn't even half of them. All right, you see the you know, desert ones here on the side, and then it's got the normal uh, just forest, and that's one stack, and then I've got this whole other big stack full of jungle and 
winter terrain, just massive amounts of terrain. So there's so much uh, variability into this. It's gonna be so awesome. All right, got my little uh, distraction there out of the way. Now below where it tells you on your terrain, you're gonna have any special rules that uh, are gonna be in this campaign. For example, this one, add one to the attack rolls against US armor and light armor. That's bad. Um, that's to signify like when they went to North Africa, they had green tanks and a brown tan environment. You know, that actually happened to me on my first tour overseas. Uh, we got there and you could easily tell the difference between you know, army personnel and marine personnel because the army personnel had all the nice digital desert camis and high speed this and low drag that and marines were still walking around in old school um, jungle fatigues, black boots on and you know, we had crap compared to the army. 6% of the defense budget, budget doesn't get you too much. That's all right, we may do, we may do. Anyway, uh, down at the bottom, you're gonna see where it says R-E-G-R-A-V. That is the skill level of the commanders that you get to pick. So you need to start with your leftmost icon, which is gonna be recruit, and work to the right. So as you pick commanders, you have to pick, on our example here, five commanders of the recruit level before you start picking green, then average skilled veteran, uh, on up to ace. Now, this one, I think it's, was it 13? Let's see, it's eight, 10, yeah, 13 are listed down on this one. So what happens if you pick 15 units? Well, that's what that little star icon next to the three is on uh, the green level, the second level from the left. That means any commanders that you pick past the point that are listed down on your campaign card are going to be that level, okay? So you'd have green on past, on up 14, 15, 16, 17, however many commanders that you end up picking. But you need to make sure you hold on to some SO points. Good God, I spent SO points. I didn't have many left. All right, so after on our little campaign setup, it's right up here, we select our campaign card, then we select our objective card. Again, look to your left. I've got uh, an example up for you guys. Uh, I chose offensive for my first one just because it looked neat for me and I decided to go with that. Uh, it's a little longer, but we'll make do. Now, top left, it's going to show your starting SO points. This one is 45. Now, you're going to add that to your campaign card. So, for this campaign, I'm got, uh, I received a total of 100 SO points to start. And then each week, I'll receive eight more as shown on the weekly SO points, plus eight at the end of each week. You get eight uh, depending if there's nothing else affecting it, like uh, enemy battalions and where they're at. And then it tells you how long it lasts. Um, where it says battalion points, we'll go over that here in just a sec. Again, any special rules that are gonna affect it are gonna be down there in that middle section like uh, minus three from assault battalion move rolls, uh, minus two from support and command uh, battalion operational move. That's gonna be uh, end of the week when the battalions are up here and they're moving forward back, however they're moving, this is going to adjust that special rule for that. And then at the bottom, you see victory points and the valuation. If you get 41 or up, hey, you did really good. If you get 16 or under, you're at gimpy levels of dismal. So, real easy to understand. You just take and pick one campaign, one objective, and you can take and mix and match those. There is a nice selection of objective cards. It has objective there on the back of them. And you have a decent selection of uh, campaign cards as well. There are three for the Japanese. I kept saying Chinese in my unboxing video, I apologize. And six for the uh, German campaigns to choose from. And you get to mix and match these. So it's, don't think of it as like, oh, well you only have three for the Japanese. No, you have, if you really think about it, six for each one of these Japanese cards because you have the Japanese card and then you're gonna be able to select one of the operations to go with it. So you have multiple operations 
for each one of these cars. So there's a massive amount of uh, variability and replayability with a small amount of cards. I love how they did that. Very interesting. All right, so we got past our campaign. We've picked our objective. We're good there. We're doing the offensive. Now we're gonna draw battalion cards. And that's this stack that I have up here where it has battalion cards. I've gone ahead and drawn mine out. Now what you're gonna do is there's going to be a assault, command, and supply, all right, the three different types. You're gonna draw two assault, one uh, supply, and then one command card, one battalion card, and then I should again have one up there on the uh, left side of the screen for you. As an example, I'll put uh, 4A up there, the German 4A, which is the first one I'm gonna be attacking. The underneath where it says 4A, you see nine slash four, and then three underneath it. The three is its battalion points. That's how much it costs. Now, earlier, when we looked at our offensive, uh, what's it called, objective card, muddled out there, it had 55 battalion points. Well, that's what you've got to add up to. So you're going to take and draw two assault, one support, one command card, and you're going to keep doing that until that uh, number equals your battalion number or higher. So I needed to equal 55 battalion points or higher with that uh, battalion number listed on each card. So this one was a three. Let's see, what are some of the others up here? We have another three, three, this one's seven, five, one. It just depends like, okay, this one only has two rifles, two machine guns and six trucks. So it's a little basic supply convoy, not very uh, offensive, but this one has eight tanks in it, two half tracks, two rifles, two machine guns, two AT guns, and two armored cars. That thing will just destroy you. Ooh, good God, that's only seven? What is, oh, look at that. The Or that was only five. This one's seven, and that one has a buttload. Wow. All right, so, sorry for a little rant there. As you're also looking at the card, where you see, uh, obviously, there on the left, what I was just talking about is the units that you're gonna face that are on the card. At the bottom where it says, uh, for example, on 4A, it says friendly staging. That tells you where you're gonna put the counter that represents this battalion because you're gonna have a counter for each one of these battalions that will go on your, I forget what that's called, basically the operational movement uh, display right up here. And you can see where I have all the enemy counters already laid out wherever they go. So as you draw these, once you get your stack and you get your uh, battalion point levels, the requirement that you need to meet, you'll take and draw the counter for each one of these. It's very simple, they're just 4A, or 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, you know, 1S, 2C, you know, that type of stuff, very easy to find. And you lay them wherever they're listed down to go. This one goes in friendly staging. A lot of them, more of them went in friendly staging than I actually thought would go. You have to do a lot of bashing to get those off. Uh, some of them will be static. They won't move during the operation phase. Those will tend to have the building icon on the counter. I'll put one of those on the screen so you guys can see that. Uh, there will also be um, any special rules for the battalion, again, on the bottom of the card. And the only other numbers that you need to worry about on the card are above its battalion number. Again, on this one, our Scout Force 4A. Over onto the right side, you see nine slash four. That nine slash four is the points that you need to destroy to wipe out the battalion. If you destroy nine points of the battalion, you've reduced it by half. If you reduce it, or not destroyed nine points, if you reduce, yeah, if you reduce it down to where they only have that many points left, then they're down to half. And then if you reduce it down to where they only have uh, four left, then they're uh, destroyed. So you don't have to necessarily destroy everything they've got on the board to take them out. Anyway, there we go. We've got our battalion taken care of. And you don't draw the one that you're picking yet. You don't pick it at this point. I'm just showing you as an example. Now, after you've drawn your stack of battalion cards, 
and you've set up their counters up here on your top right, you're gonna buy your units. And honestly, this is the best part of the game for me. I love this part of the game. I could just do this part of the game uh, all day long. You're gonna take and keep track of your SO points that you have to spend. So you're gonna have a little sheet here. This is a photocopy that I uh, scanned and printed out. Uh, there are some other sheets on BGG if you don't like the uh, style that uh, DVG or BGG, DVG, you guys know what I mean. On BGG, there are other files if you don't like the style that DVG uses. Uh, for me, it works fine, so it's what I'm going with. On mine, you can see I've got 100 points that I wrote down with my shitty handwriting. I'm in the North Africa 1942 campaign, eight weeks long, eight um, weekly SO points. The objective is offensive. And then uh, my unit purchases are 84 at this point. That's what I bought to start my campaign with. Now, this is half of my forces. This is just the ones that I'm going to be taking into the first fight. I'll set this down to the side and show you guys. You're going to take and pick through your stack of unit cards here, which will have everything from multiple different types of tanks, from M3s to sh different types of Shermans, the 75 mil, the 76 mil. Um, you're going to have infantry half tracks, uh, artillery or mobile guns basically, that M7 Priest is a uh, self-propelled gun in uh, World of Tanks, but it's armor in this one. Uh, so you, M8 Scott, I would assume that's another like, more like self-propelled gun since it looks like it's got like the big stub, snub nosed howitzer cannon type deal. Anyway, but you're gonna have scout cars, infantry armored cars so many cool things to pick from i like these little things the uh half tracks that have the uh, 75 mil on them but you're going to take and pick through these and i'll take and put one of the cards up here in the top left so you guys can see you will take and look on the right side of that card underneath its number for example our m3 uh grant that i've picked here it's number 36. There's a counter that's associated with it. And under 36, you see the number eight. That eight is the SO point cost of this tank. So you're gonna take and purchase equipment and vehicles on down the line. You wanna try to get a little bit of a varied selection. Don't buy just tanks or just infantry, you know. Try to get, you know, some armor, some light armor some infantry, some artillery if you can. But you're gonna take and purchase whatever you wanna purchase. They will each come with their own commander and that's back to what we were talking about of the skill level of commanders. That's where you're gonna be getting uh, your commanders at that point. Let's go over our unit card real quick uh, before we get into that. Uh, to make your selection, you're gonna to have to look at its service number. On our M3 grant here, its service is 1941 to 1943. So you can only use it in campaigns that happen during that time frame. If they don't happen during that time frame, you can't pick that selected vehicle. Uh, our M3 works because we're in 1942, but as an example, let me find one that doesn't. Okay, so we have our M24 Chaffee here. That's only uh, applicable during 1944 to 1945. So you're not going to be able to pick it for your earlier campaigns. You will take and grab your unit card and the counter that goes with it and you will set it down to the side. And like I said, try to get a varied selection. For me, I ended up picking three M3 Grants. I picked three of the M3 slash M5 Stuarts. I picked two of the M3, is everything an M3? Did they have any Mark II, Mark I? The Mark III half track. Got two of those. I got two anti-tank uh, infantry teams, two rifle teams, and one of the ATGs. I didn't have enough points left. I wanted to save a few 
Um, I thought about going ahead and getting another gun, but that would only left me with eight SO points, so I figured I could take uh, and purchase that at a later point. Now, am I saying my selection is good? Eh, I chose quantity over quality. I could have got a better fighting force with less equipment, but this way I figured I could run a couple of different sets and try to uh, bounce them off so they're not having to go into combat all the time. Uh, maybe give one set a break or, you know, something of that nature. Just trying it out. Uh, all right. So after you've picked out your units, then you have to take and pick your commanders. And there are a buttload of commanders to pick from. But that's because you're going to have commanders. Uh, you're going to have three cards for each commander. All right. Like Stout here, he has three cards for him. And it's going to go all the way from recruit to green, from green to average, from average to skilled, from skilled to veteran, from veteran to ace. Now, you're going to take and look at your um, campaign card to take a... I apologize for my dog's barking. I apologize for that. They drive me nuts sometimes. You're going to take and look at your campaign card, and it's going to show you, remember, what uh, commanders you have to pick. For our campaign, we need to start with recruit. We have to pick five, then green three, uh, average three, skill two. Uh, and then after that, we could pick as we pleased. It just so happened that I ended up picking right there at, well, what did I have? I had... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, I had 13. So I picked right along exactly with what uh, was on the, uh, the unit count for the campaign. So it doesn't matter. But let me take and put a example card here on the screen for you guys. This guy is Cushing. He is a armor commander. And his skill level is skilled. At the top right, that number underneath is his uh, kind of command rating thing. That's how many uh, experience points he's going to need at the end of a uh, week to take and level up or end of a battle. You can take and level them up. You guys will see that uh, when we take and get done with our first battle. On the left side, that uh, red and blue number there, his is number one. That's his cool rating. So the higher that number, the better. That's will reduce their stress so after a battle you get to subtract the cool rating from their stress that gets added to them uh, definitely a good thing down at the bottom if you played any dvd uh dvd dv i always do that shit uh dvg games uh you've seen this before the stress levels uh mr cushing here at his skilled level Zero to five, he's okay. He'll be at speed slow, which means he op or, uh, activates after the enemy does. And then his bonuses of plus two, plus two, depending on his range. Six to nine, he's shaken. He's still usable, but his stats go down. And then after nine stresses on him, he is combat ineffective, and you're going to have to reduce his stress before he can go back into it. Like I said, each card has two sides, and the higher the skill level, the better the commander is going to be. I don't know why for me, but I just decided to go with um, more of my recruit type commanders <clears throat> on my infantry and half tracks. I tried to save all my best commanders for the armor, considering the tanks I figured were my best bet to win. I can throw infantry to the wind considering a rifle team is three SO points and a M3 Grant, which is my best tank in this campaign so far, is eight points. So I want to take and make sure and keep my uh, better units, you know, with better uh, commanders. But if they do survive, they can take and level up and flip over and have better stats. Now, after we bought our units and we have selected our commanders, like I said, you're going to select a commander for each unit that you have. You're going to take and do your start of the week operations. First thing that you're going to do is you're going to take and draw a uh, special condition card. Let's take and draw one and see what we have here. This is Allied Air Control. 
Keep this card, discard at the end, at the start of the move battalion steps to retreat a non-fixed battalion that is not in the enemy breakthrough. So basically I'm gonna hold on to this card till the end of the week when we do the uh, move battalion step and I can use it at that point to force some of those guys back, which would definitely be a good thing for me considering how I've got some of them already in the friendly staging area. Okay, and something I forgot to mention when we were doing our buy unit steps, uh, there are units that you can buy that are not technically units that you're going to have down here. Those are going to be your trucks and scout cars. They're useful when it comes to uh, logistics of what battalions you're attacking. They can reduce the SO point cost that it takes to attack a unit. Uh, for example, when you're attacking enemies farther away, it's actually going to cost you SO points. Once you start attacking them in the enemy transit, rear, and breakthrough areas back here, you're going to have to pay one, two, or three SO points to attack those. You can put a truck there to take and reduce that, and scout cars, if you assign them to a battalion you're attacking, uh, give you extra turns to attack the enemy. Um, you start with five turns. Every battle is going to be five turns unless you take and put scout cars or some event takes and changes that, uh, then you know, you'll know you adjust it accordingly. If you do have scout cars attached to it, uh, what it recommends in the book, and I would do is take and put them up here by your t uh, battle turn track, just to remember that you are going to take and uh, have the, uh, the longer battle at that point, because each scout car will add a turn to the battle for you. All right, so you're going to take and assign your units after you've drawn your special operation cards and this is where you're going to pick what units are going to attack what battalions. Now, for example, in the one that we spoke about previously, I am attacking Battalion 4A, the enemy scout force, and I have chosen my M3 Grant, two Stuarts, a half track, the anti tank team, the rifle team, and the uh, anti tank gun. So I'm taking roughly half my force into this battle to see if I do any good. Probably won't, but you know, we can always take and hope for the best. Now that I have assigned my units, I've got them down here at the uh, bottom of the board so I can easily see their stats. I've got their counters right here on top of them ready to go. I've got the battalion that I'm attacking set here ready to go. We're going to take and go to our pre-combat phase where we're going to take and draw an event card to start with and you're going to take and look at the top portion of the card for your pre-combat phase. So for this one, we gain one extra battle turn. So we're going to have a six battle, uh, six turn battle instead of a five turn battle. I'll set this up here just so I can remember that. Now we're going to place our turn counter. That's going to be right here. Place your terrain tiles. I went ahead and did this just so I wouldn't have to take and uh, waste a lot of time shuffling them around on camera and letting you guys see how uncoordinated I am. But for example, what you're going to do is take whatever terrain tiles you need. For example, I need a desert and you just kind of shuffle them up as best you can. And once you have them shuffled, you'll take and lay them down randomly here on the board. And the way I do it to ensure that I take and don't have any preconceived notions about it or anything is I'll lay them face down and once I have them all down I'll flip them up. On the tiles themselves if you look at them each one of them has an arrow that points to its uh, northern side it'll be on every tile and it'll point to you or point you to which way you need to put it. You always put that arrow in the upper right uh, quadrant of it pointing up and you're good to go. So we've got our terrain tiles down we have our turn counter down. We're going to take and pre uh, place our friendly units. So we do place our stuff before the enemy goes. Let me take and grab this. This is one part that I can never remember is that um, advanced thing. I don't think it's on the board because I haven't seen it. But if I am wrong, I am wrong on that one. All right, here is the place friendly unit step. You may issue each of your AT and MG units uh, one move order, and you may issue each one of your rifle units one or two move orders. So I am going to take and start putting my units out here on the board. 
And I think I want, since this is impassable terrain here, my infantry can get into it and use it for heavy cover, but vehicles can't. And then there's this set of low, uh, or yeah, low cover, high cover over here I can use that if I can kind of hold this ground, I can do all right. So I'm going to start my infantry here. You have to start them all along the bottom, but you get to move certain ones up. My MG or my AT team will go here into this terrain and I'll have my rifle team. Should they go here or here? Yeah, we'll have them go one more up. So rifle team's there to start off with. Everything else is going to be here along the bottom because none of it, uh, none of the rest is going to get movement points. I'm going to use my half track to move my gun. It has the transport ability which I'll get into that when we get into, because I'm already long on this video, so I know it's gonna be part two before I start rolling it. I'll get into the unit special abilities when we get to that point, but the half track's gonna be moving the gun. So he needs to be somewhere down around here. Where am I gonna put him? I don't know. Should I spread out? Should I? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of men alive today because I didn't command them in combat. <laughs> All right, let's go here with him. Let's go here with him. Oh, I'm knocking it around. I tell you what, let's do, the gun has good range, so I'll take and put him there, put a tank there, there, and another one here. So maybe I can kind of do a sweeping action. I'm down around here, and if the enemy comes in this way, maybe my infantry can hold them as I envelop them from the right. We'll have to see how that's going to work out. Now, once we have placed the friendly units, we're going to take and place our uh, enemy units. Now, I've already grabbed out the ones that we need, which was two rifle, two machine gun, two truck, two armor car, and we need two tanks. For your tanks, you're going to take and draw those based on the left side of your tactical sheet where it says Germany and uh, Japan tank types right here on your board. Depending on what year your campaign is, you're going to seed your cup with those. So for example, my campaign's 42, so I'm going to have three Panzer uh, threes, two Panzer fours, and two Stugs that are in my cup. Then, when I go to do a battle, I'm going to randomly draw two of these counters to determine what tanks I'm going to have in the battle. So, let's see, we got ourselves a Panzer III and a Panzer III, which isn't that surprising considering that's the majority of what is in the cup. Now, we're going to take and place our enemy units. And enemy uh, unit placement is done by this little chart that's up in the top right. But the basic gist is you start at 1 and go to 10, and you just roll a 10-sided die. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to determine where the units go. If, for example, they are put in a spot that they can't go in, like water, they're just placed into an adjacent hex. So I'm going to take and just roll off on them real quick. And for ease, I'm just going to take and roll them through. And let's see what we've got here four for this guy so he's gonna go there since he was supposed to go in the water he'll go adjacent and i'm not worried about it. the mg's gonna take a move up by one anyway second one is also a four he's gonna go there Oop. i'm gonna re-roll that i don't think another four two two is gonna be here another two they're all just rolling doubles all right next one Got another four. All right. Since I went adjacent there this whole time, I'll go adjacent up so the tank will be a little farther up. One here. Five. Five's going to place this armor car there. And six is going to be here. And I didn't do these enemies in any specific order. I just grabbed the counters as they were there for ease for me. So I didn't waste a whole lot of time. And another one. So now we've got our enemies seated on the board 
And this is one of the things I like about it, is the fact that they're going to be randomly placed each time. So even if you play the same campaign, same objective, pick the same guys, you're still not going to face the same units each time. They're going to be in a different place, and they're going to be drawn differently, especially the tanks that are going to be randomized in the cup. So outstanding as far as that's concerned. Now, the enemy units, they're going to have starting advances as well. After you're going to place them, the enemy AT and machine gun units will do one advance order, and the rifle units will do two advance orders. So, you can take and look on the left side, the enemy tactical movement here. The first one is advance, closest friendly unit, and that's going to be towards the heaviest cover. So, it tells you exactly how they're going to move. So, let's see, these two rifles are going to advance twice towards the heaviest cover, so they're going to go one, two, one, two, because that puts them into cover here, and they're advancing towards the closest uh, one of my guys. These guys are probably just going to go straight forward here. All right, so they're set to go. These guys are set to go. The only problem is I don't have any fast troops. It is all slow troops for me and fast troops for them. So, or not fast troops for them, but uh, they're all going to go before me. So I have a feeling this guy is not going to be around for very long because there's two uh, rifle squads that are come, They're going to come right on top of him and mess him up. If he survives, though, he'll be all right. But there is some blocking terrain here. I will be able to move my tanks up possibly over here and get them to get some cover because this low cover here and this high cover here is blocking terrain so it will block line of sight from the enemy getting to some of my guys give me a little bit of cover so my goal though is to take out their tanks which are bunched up back over here see if i can wipe them out let's see there's one panzer three well no they're kind of spread out they get a panzer three here and here, but both of their armored cars are here. All right, but anyway, we are set. The uh, enemy placement is done. We have done our campaign setup, our start of the week, and our pre-combat phases, and we're good to the start of the actual combat. Now, when we pick up on our next video, we're gonna start with the first phase of combat, which is your fast moving attack, which as I just said, I don't have, but, uh, so the first thing will be rolling for enemy move, which we'll do over there. But you guys will see that in the next video. That's going to conclude it for this one. Y'all be on the lookout for the next one. I should have it up here in just a few days. Y'all take care. I'll see you in the next video.